Greetings and welcome back everyone to Thea the Awakening on the day of its release. Now, depending on when this video goes live, it may have been released by the time you see this video or it may be about to be released. Though, do be aware that uh, prior to its actual release, there is a bit of a discount available for it on Humble Store. I, that should be in the video description below as well. But if it has already been released on Steam, I believe that uh, discount will have expired. Now, I have had an opportunity to read a lot of the comments, and we're going to do a little bit of something here. Now, uh, let us find... there we are. What I would like from you is to join the town. Now, what are we going to do with the chat town is we're going to set up a very specific expedition. But first, let's check on Dapperton and see how things are going. Now, in terms of production, we've got a couple of gatherers doing bits and bobs around the place. We've got some meat being created into good meals. We're making uh, fur coats at the moment with both people, really. That seems remarkably odd. No, I don't think that's what we're making. I'm fairly certain that what we're making is actually food. But... <laughs> I guess that's a little bit of a glitch. Uh, for the sake of making sure I don't make something I don't mean to, let's go ahead and set up some... So we're going to have some fish. Um, we will use... Um, sure, we could use seaweed. And then the last thing will just be regular wood. This gives simply cooked fish. Alternatively, I could make it like this. Uh, it doesn't really give me any particular benefit there it's just what it is um well you see weed in that case so that's gonna be our food uh simply cooked fish now i want someone who can specifically uh work on crafting now plump uh it only needs 58 i could use isdar for this perhaps i'm tempted yeah is that isn't quite overkill on that the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make another meal this time it is going to be vegetables and we are going to use more seaweed and more wood so there we are some basic vegetables there we're going to have plump working on this so every two turns plump will make some vegetables now gathering tools there's a few things we can do here we can we have to use these the only thing we can do so we've got wicker we have yarn and what? This will give us a, a tool for three. A set of tools to make any gathering job easier. Okay, that's not too bad. We could use this there. Hasn't changed it. Would this change it? Oh, there we are. A set of tools to make any gathering job easier. 34, that's 42. However, let's see how this works much lighter but actually very very nice very nice indeed okay well there's only really one thing we can use in this lot and that is the the wicker there so i'm gonna go ahead and get some gathering tools as well and for this i would like calissa because it's probably going to take a long time to sort that out so that's one thing sorted next up i would like to take people off these jobs um, let's get everyone sorted out. So we need two people who can gather about 60 to get some every turn. So I could use Metasapien and Gravelord to this end. Alternatively, once we've actually got one of those wicker baskets, we should be able to have a couple of people who will be able to do it. Um, but we could go ahead... I think Blank Door was probably one of the better ones. And... Dion, perhaps. There we go. Now, if we look at a new expedition, if we head over here, we can see what everyone's set up as. We've got quite a few people who are decent craftsmen. There's not particularly any point in having craftsmen join us on a, an expedition. They're probably going to be better off in the town. So we're going to be taking Shelab. She's a hunter. It's going to be very, very useful. We'll be taking Dapper Machester, who is a warrior. We'll also be taking Fiery for the same reason. Then we'll be taking... 
Now, oh, Metasapia, you're a decent gatherer. We'll be taking you. I'm thinking I may leave some people behind, but honestly, no. We'll take Grave Lord and we'll take Garoon as well. So that's our group of people there. Now, I would like to have a look at what you are equipped with. The perception. Oh, that's fine. This gives damage and find weakness. We're going to take that off you. Uh, Dion, you've got a sword and shield here. An amethyst sword and a shield. Uh, and you've got a fairly nice set of that. I'm not going to leave you with a shield. We'll have a look at some other things. Uh, actually, we'll go over to equipment. It'll be a little bit easier to sort of this out. Um, yeah, we'll manage the equipment of our townspeople first. Uh, let's see. So, is the this gives sturdiness? Let's drop that off. In fact, I'm thinking we'll actually unequip everyone who's going to be staying in the town, and then equip everyone from the start again based on who's coming on expeditions and all of that sort of stuff so i want my the people going out into the more dangerous um situations to have the best gear that is is available in the town at the moment okay that's good enough for me so if we look now to new expedition we can set this up properly so shelab fiery garoon metasapia and Dapper McChester, as well as Gravelord. So we've got our six people who are coming on this expedition right there. We can look at equipment. We are going to want... Well, ideally, honestly, I'd like to be able to see... Hmm. That's a little bit of a frustration. Uh, it's not a particularly useful setup there. But I can, at the very least, give them all of this fantastic food. There we go. And I think that's pretty much... Oh, they're going to need some wood as well. So we'll give them enough for 20 days. There we go. They're not going to be taking any children along. That's dumb. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm simply going to give them all the weapons. As far as I'm aware, this, this is possibly one of the easier... Oh, well, actually, no. Ease is not the, the word I'd use. This is probably going to be one of the more straightforward ways of working out exactly what the best items are to give to my, my uh, expedition. So there we are. Created the expedition. I think that's all good. Go. Right. Now we're going to go ahead and equip our expedition. So we'll start with Shelab. Now, Shelab, I would like you to have the better hunting gear as you're effectively a huntress. Uh, perception, sturdiness, find weakness and damage. I don't mind giving you one of these, yeah. I'll also give you this. So I am effectively setting Shelab up as one of the, the better damage dealers here. Um, as for weapons... Amethyst sword. Hmm, I'm not sure about that. I wouldn't mind you having a, a sword and a shield. How much more weight can you carry? Uh, not a huge amount at this point. Fortunately. Could you get this short sword, though? So you can have that. And that Sheila up there, not, not hugely uh, well armoured, but she does have a couple of things going for her here. Um, so that's our Huntress. Fiery, uh, one of our dedicated warriors. You're going to get the other shield. And find weakness and damage. You can't actually wear that, which is a bit of a shame. Three armour, six shielding. That's 110, that's 98. Uh, actually, no, I'll give you that. You will also have our... Let's see, 14 armor there. This would give another 10 armor. So you'll be one of our premier damage dealers. So we're going to want another one-handed weapon for you. I think this would be a good one for you. Actually, we'll give you the iron shield because you've got a massive weight allowance. So it makes more sense for you to have a heavier shield. Uh, in fact, there you go. We'll give you that as well. 
I think that's about it. How much war damage do you do? Four damage with that. You do 16 damage there. I could give you this because you'll do blunt damage at that point. So 14 damage, but you'll do blunt. Which might be worth it, honestly. Yeah, I think that might be a better better setup for you. And that's about it. Right, so the next one, down from McChester, your other dedicated warrior. And what would I like you to have? You do 10 damage by default. You've already got 14 armor, which is really nice to see. I think I'm going to give, go ahead and give you even more armor and extra shielding. When you come into the fray, I want you to do crazy amounts of damage. So the three and six. This, I mean, it's heavy, but you can carry quite a lot of weight. So yeah, we'll go with that for you. Next up, I could give you a weapon with additional damage, like poison. And I think I will. Six extra damage there. I mean, you're not going to do a huge amount of... Well, that said. I could give you this. But you'd lose that extra armor. No, I think... Hmm, it's a difficult choice, actually. Nine, ten, eight... I mean, ultimately, we kind of want the strongest people with the best armor to have the the heavy damages and things that will, for example, piercing would be great with Fiery. So yeah, I'll give Fiery this instead because she's still now got 14 damage, so half of that will be applied when she jumps in, and she'll still have 21 armor. She's only got one shielding now, which is unfortunate, but I think that actually works out okay. Um, you've already got 17 armor. Mm. Let's take... I think you can handle that. We'll give you a heavy-hitting weapon. So that puts you up to 17 damage, and you're going to bash with it, which would be quite nice. It does... It's only 14 armor there as a result. Well, I think we're just going to have to live with that one. Yeah, I think that, that looks quite nice. Okay, so that's Dapper McJester and Fiery and Sheila taken care of. Metasapia. Let's give you... Yeah, sure. We'll give you that. Now I'm going to want you to have a light shield. Because you do not have very much armor. You've now got seven shielding, which is nice. You've got fairly limited damage potential. So I'd like to give you a weapon that gives you some additional shielding as well. Uh, that's a shame. Of course, I wasn't paying any attention there. There you go. That'll do. So you're you're up to 11 armor now with 12 shielding. You're not going to do a great deal of damage, but you know you're gonna you're still going to be a competent warrior when it comes to actual combat. Now you've got 10 armor to start with, and eight ar uh, damage to start with, which is nice. Let's see, we could give you this for some extra sturdiness. Now, as for your weapon, I mean, we're running low on one-handed weapons at this point. But you have got a reasonable amount of carry capacity there. I could give you one of our two-handers. Um, yeah, I mean, the extra shielding would be nice for you. That gives you 7 shielding on top of your 10 armor, and you're going to do uh, a reasonable amount, 16 damage there, so that seems okay. I think the only one then, without any gear, will be Gravelord. Right, Gravelord, it's time for you to be equipped. You've got 9 armor, easily one of the lowest to start with. So, it's going to be a nice shield for you, but that's a heavy one. So, too, is this. Any of these light... That one's the lightest remaining. Uh, okay. It's only 52. I mean, you're not going to have a lot of damage if I give you this, honestly. I have more if I give you that one. Four and five shielding. Ah, dread. That is a shame. Uh, well, actually, no, that'll still work. Okay, you've got 13 shielding. That, that gives you a reasonable amount. Still not a very good damage dealer, but... 
Gives you a reasonable bit of uh, protection there. Hopefully we can get you some better, better gear in the future. But that will do for all of your equipment. Okay, now that we've done all of that, we can go ahead and trade with the town. So pretty much anything that you're not equipped with needs to go to the town at this point. You've got all of the equipment that you need. I just need to move all of the stuff that didn't get used to everyone in the town. There we go, confirm. And they can equip that themselves then. There we are, that looks good. Okay, close that. And you, I think we're gonna move you forward for now. Because then I'm gonna jump into Dapperton. I'm going to have everyone equip in Dapperton. Uh, Blankto is there. 10 armor, 7, 11. Okay, you've got the most armor. Let's give you something that doesn't have shielding as a result. Uh, yeah, sure, we'll give you that. Uh, that's a lot of weight. You're not going to be equipping a shield. Uh, you can't anyway, it's a double-handed weapon. Uh, next up. You've got the second best armor. You will be using this. Now this does not have shielding at all. So, hopefully you'll be okay. Uh, this doesn't have shielding either, mind you, but, uh... Blank to, uh, plump, rather. You got fairly low. In fact, you've got the lowest, so I do want you with a shield. Do we have any particularly... Yeah, this is a fairly light item. You've also got a reasonable amount of carrying capacity, actually, yeah. We'll give you one of these... Uh, Pavis shields. Heavy but good amount of shielding. So you've actually now got a, quite a decent defensive capability and 10 damage as well is not actually not bad. Alright, Dion, you're up next. Uh, we have no more double-handed weapons. And, well, what's your damage? 7 damage. Blank door has 4. Okay, so you're going to be the better one to have the bash. And at that point, we can still get you with one of the larger, heavier shields there. Finally, Blank Tor. You don't really get a choice. Well, not much of one, anyway. What's your shielding? Uh, we'll give you this for shielding. And then there's really not much I'm going to be able to do, because you're not going to be able to equip the rest, unfortunately. Good luck, Blank. <laughs> you kind of drew the short straw there. I do apologize. But, on this point, um, I'm also going to manage my supplies. I do not want the expensive, rare stuff being consumed. There we go. Don't want these being consumed, really, either. There we are. In fact... We get a reasonable amount of that every couple of turns. Uh... We'll just, you're only allowed to eat uh, meat and vegetables for your meals. You can eat pretty much whatever you want. And burn whatever you want. Okay. Right, well. I think we'll uh, head off. We'll smack this den. Then we're going to go over to Theodore's tutorial. Why risk a frontal attack when we have good hunters with us? Go hunting. Um, no. No. No, we're going to go ahead and just fight the four malicious spiders straight away. Hopefully, we've done fairly well for ourselves. We've got a good amount of shielding. Well, except for you. But you've got the best um, def natural defenses anyway. We've got some uh, counter tactics are not so good. Shield ally is nice, though. Shield has a very good first action. Very good counter tactic, counter offense. Shield ally is fantastic. In fact, I kind of want to try and spread some of the equipment that Shelab's got, perhaps, to other people. So that Shelab doesn't have all of the good abilities. Bearing in mind she can only ever really use one of them before the card is discarded. Confused at five, though, is nice. And that shield. Okay, yeah, I'm happy with this. Opponent goes first. Drat. Okay. Unfortunately, our... Piercer is over here. Well, actually... I wonder if I have Get Closer, whether that will kill. That would be interesting. Shall we see? Yes. Well, that's fantastic. A piercing weapon can still be used on the first turn. Didn't realize that. It was for science. And it turned out to be a pretty good for science, actually. 
Okay, now... I would not mind playing... Now the thing here is I kind of want one of the least guarded of my units to be behind. Now, I'm going to play Dapper McJess for two reasons. One, shielding plus armor has the least armor of all of my main combat units. My plan is, whoever I play now will be the fast action to the front so that they're away from fiery. They're behind fiery, effectively. So all of the enemy units will have to go through everyone else before they can attack them. But the nice thing with Dapper McJester is this weapon is going to kill two opponents in the first round. More than likely kill this Militia Spider and one of the Tactics ones as well. So there we go. That's that's my plan. We'll see if it works. There we go. It, there's no reason why they wouldn't move that one forward. There we go. I'm probably going to do the same again. Now, we're going to take two out in the first round, and then finish them off behind as well. And... Just go ahead. This is, I should have played it on that one, honestly, but oh well. Honestly, we're not going to need it. There we go. Wow. It was that simple. Best way to slay a beast is eye to eye. You have won the challenge. One EXP, one bit of uh, research. Actually, fa getting fairly close. Now, I would like them to go to Theodore's tutorial on the next turn. We'll go ahead and get it. Now, this, obviously, this uh, episode is going to be a little bit longer. I may cut out some of the re-equipping. Uh, some of it. Possibly just the shunting things back and forth between the uh, outpost. But I do kind of want people to see what I chose to give people and the reasoning behind it so that you can possibly comment on that if I've made the right sort of choices for the right reasons or not. But let's go ahead and talk with Theodore. Theodore welcomes you. Well, hello there. Wow. I see you're finding your feet and making first steps into the world. Well done. It seems that prior to release, they've already added a few new things just before the release date rolls over. So, uh, yeah, we've now got voices. I wasn't even aware. We've been to the dungeon. Excellent stuff. Perhaps you noticed how the dungeon had many routes to explore, and some may still be obscured for you if you lack certain skills. Indeed. Magic users, and those who know folklore, for example, often find themselves finding more information or alternative options. Oh, okay. But the same goes for all the skills, really. So make sure to send diverse teams out into the world, as you never quite know what you might need. I feel you are now ready to take on Thea without me. So long, dear friends, and may you bring prosperity to fear. Oh, one last thing. Yes? Soon you will begin finding clues to pursue the mystery of the cosmic tree. So watch out for those. <laughs> yeah, off you go, fella. That was not fun. No, I'm not going to be rude to Theodore. Well, thank you for your help. 3 XP, one bit of research. Fantastico. Now... What can we see? There's lots of places out here. Place to see over there. We should probably start making our way up in that direction then. Very well. We're going to go in this direction though because we haven't seen it before. Oh dear. Well, I don't particularly care if you have a bit of a scrap there. Now, how are we doing here? We've got 16 days worth of food, 20 days worth of fuel. Dapperton, 61 and 48 should be fine. We've made some stuff there. Now, the only issue is Dapperton is probably not going to be able to uh, craft any more food, unfortunately. Uh, we've got two, but I mean, we just don't have this, enough of this to make the extra foods, which is a bit of a pain. We're going to need our expedition to bring that back for us. Bit of a pain, that one. Might also look at roasting. If we get an opportunity to research roasting, that would be very useful, I think. Right, it's already moved our helpers along, which is pretty cool. That's actually really cool. So that's going to be done in one turn now. Alright, so we've got a bit of an encounter. Suspected it. Begin combat. We should be okay, I think. You've got first action, first action. That's actually quite nice. So we will definitely be able to push people in front of the enemy. They've only got two that are going to be moving first. We've got first deployment. So I want the person with the... Ooh, 
since I'm going to be pushing people in front of them, I want the person with the greatest defense. So there we go, Dion. Because all of the enemy units, unless they get a first action, are going to be going behind them. Not that it makes a lot of difference right now, I'll be honest. In fact, with the amount of shielding that we generally got, it probably won't make any difference. But let's just push blank door forward. See how the enemy plays their cards. Okay, now, things have really much more sped up, interestingly. I wasn't aware that, that was going to be a thing, but... And we're going to move them forward as well. Oh, next turn, sorry. There we go. We will have taken out all of the attackers that are going to be taking a move this turn. In fact, very certain we'll kill them all. Because of our good damage there. Two spider silk. Oh, that's actually really nice. Very nice. Though, I'm not entirely sure that I like things moving quite that fast. So, let's just have a quick look at the settings. Uh, max, um, expeditions, animation speed, map scroll speed. Ah, yeah, card animation time. I'm going to slow it down just a tad. Just, just a little bit. Just move it to there. That should be, that should be nice. Okay, apply. And resume. Okay. Now then, as uh, some may have noticed as well, I was asked to drop the music volume just a little bit more um, than it was previously. So I've adjusted that slightly. Hopefully, it's a little bit better, and I can generally do some post-editing as well. But uh, do let me know in the comments on this video whether that has addressed the problem, because I did have quite a few people um, mention that the volume is a little bit off compared to the audio volume. So let's go and have a look what we've got here. Search. You're one of the buildings, a strange-looking stone and metal built affair, and you hear the clunking noise, then a blunt thud before you're able to do anything. You see a skeleton charging away. One skeleton, four hulking rats. I think we should be fine. Um, in fact, we're well enough equipped at this point that I'm actually not afraid of however they deploy themselves. However, Metsapia um, is probably the least armoured, so you're going to go first. As hopefully I'm going to be able to put, deploy someone in front of you. I'm going to save Fiery to be deployed after the one of the enemies has been deployed. I'm going to use Counter Offensive to try and get rid of one of their cards. Oh, wasn't a particularly good card to get rid of, honestly. A little bit saddened by that. I was hoping to get rid of the Skeleton. Mainly I was hoping to get rid of you. Now you're easily going to be able to confuse them. So... Yeah, that's what we're going to do there. Unfortunately, I should have... Uh, oh, really? Well, actually, that's not too bad. In a way, that's actually pretty good. Right, I want to play someone with the highest damage, which was going to be Garoon there. And this is going to be a rat to be played. So I will play Fiery at that point. Get closer. You may, in fact, kill. In fact, you did. Glorious. There we are. So, three of our combatants are going to get a turn first. There we go. And we win. Still a little bit fast on the combat there. In fact, way too fast. But we got a nice axe by the look of it. A sharp stone leg. Some amber. Ooh. And what else is there? Topaz. Very nice indeed. I approve. And some more... You know, oh, we've already got uh, research. I should have been paying attention to that. To apologize. Now then, with this, very tempted to go for Wicker, so that we can continue making crafting items. That said, quite tempted to get roasted meals, so that we can simply roast our food rather than having to mix it with stuff that we don't yet have. Uh, no, we're going to go with roasted meals, uh, because I can use vegetables that way. So, meat and veg and wood, or fish, veg, and wood will give us a meal all in one go. So, yeah, we're going to grab that. We are then going to check on our town. Let's go to equipment. We have now got a set of tools to make any gathering job easier. Who is the best gatherer? Unfortunately, I can't easily see. You've got four, five. 
no gathering, no gathering, no gathering. So, with that in mind, as Plump has got the least high craft, I'd prefer Plump to have this. There we go. This way, Plump is... It's not going to hurt too much to take Plump off production. So there we go, Plump. You can now help with... Well, whatever, really. You can go ahead and help with this, I guess. Uh, in fact, Plump, why don't you take over that job and you help with this? That way, we get both jobs done every single turn. Right, as for crafting... Oh, that's actually pretty cool. We could just make some, some better tools. We've got the materials for it, but prefer not to right now. Uh, we could look at cooked meals. So now we've got a lot of different meals that we can we can uh, set up. Um, is there a way of me changing what meal I'm going for? Oh, roasted meals. Quite the derp. There we are. So there we go. So we're going to have some roasted meats. Making a good sausage is an art form, some say. To make sure they last longer, sausages are smoked or dried with plenty of herbs and spices for taste. I wonder what we could do elsewise. If we use fish, it would be for all those leftover pieces of fish or just ones that were too small to fry. A good old casserole with garden veg is all you need. Yeah, I agree. So we'll confirm that. We will have... Calissa working on that. Every two turns we'll make 18. That's not bad. And we'll also make some uh, sausages as well. And Isdar can be working on the sausages. That actually worked out quite well. We do... It would be nice to get some crafting tools though. We've now not quite got enough amber yet. Not quite. We'll keep an eye on that though. But that should be fine. Oh, we've... Apparently got someone who isn't doing something. No, oh, it looks like we do. And production complete. That was what happened previously. Okay, well, let's continue up to the place to see. We're going to go through the small hive next. Why risk a frontal attack when we have good hunters with us? Let's go hunting. Yes, I agree. Two hunting tasks here. Begin combat. Right, where is... Shelab is one of our main hunters. That's great. In fact, everyone here has the ability to do damage, which is actually pretty good. Very good, in fact. Okay. Let's go ahead and play. Our turn first. So, given that, I'm going to play... Right, have we got... We've got first action, but it's not a particularly good one. Unfortunately. I mean, we've got some people who can absorb damage not too badly, so... We'll see. And we'll also play... Hmm. Should have played that in a different order. That was a bit of a shame. Right, what are we going to have here? Oh, you've confused my strongest combatant. Well, you scoundrel, you. It shouldn't matter too much, honestly. Uh, I can't actually deploy you, and I'm not really sure that I care to anyway. But let's just go with that. There we go. Did a little bit of damage to Isda, but uh, uh sorry, not Isda. Uh we've got some amber though. That was actually pretty good. It was Garoon, I believe. Could be wrong there though. Uh this well, it looks like possibly coal over there. We've got 16 days worth of food on us, though. We're going to continue on. And into another small hive. And, uh, no, we're going to actually attack them this time. One blood bee and five crazed bees. Okay. Let's get in there. Player's turn. Well, I'm not going to play Fiery first, since she's uh, quite a capable combatant that I would like to play... After one of the enemy are down. Oh well, scoundrel. They did exactly what I was going to do. That's frustrating. Well, I could... No, I won't go with counterattack. I'm going to play Garoon next. Oh 
Okay. Next up, I'm going to... I could shield Garoon. Could play Fiery and shield Fiery. I could move... I really would prefer to play Fiery after playing someone else, honestly. Taking out some of these bees would be a good idea, though. If I could take out another one of the, the attackers, but... Hmm, I could simply confuse you. Yes, confuse you. Move Garoon forward. This is going to force their next B to be over there, then Fire can probably take that out in one hit. Ah, oh, Dret, you were clever, I see. Well, what I can do then is shield Gravelord. There we go, that's exactly... Ah, oh, scoundrels! That's not exactly what I wanted. Well, you're not going to take much damage at all, hopefully. Let's see. There we go. Unfortunately, did do a fair old chunk of damage there because the poison was getting multiplied. Though the speed of the cars right now is a little hard to keep up. Big shame there, but that's going to be nasty. We're going to find out how that plays out momentarily. Go ahead, get closer, and you'll just win the fight there. And that should be it, honestly. Right, Garoon took 10 points of damage there. That's horrific. Garoon, you're in a bad way. Okay, well, because of that, we're just going to go ahead and settle down. Uh, we'll just have a bunch of people gather for now. Just until Garoon gets a little bit better. Right, let's have a look. Abilities have improved. Shilab is stronger. Garoon is more perceptive. Dab Magressor is much healthier. Fiery is a little bit more tactical. Metasapia can craft a bit better. And Gravelord is much more perceptive. Actually, Metasapia can craft a lot better. And the town. Lots of stealth. What have you guys been up to that you're all becoming more stealthy? How curious. Village is idle. Uh, I don't care too much about that. What I would like to see is how Garoon is currently doing. Uh, not well. Spend another night. Ooh, got a random encounter. An old dwarf passes by your village, stopping only for a drink and a chat if you're willing. What? No, rob him blind. Yeah, sure, drink. Then kill him and take his stuff. No. Sure, have a drink with him. You share a drink and some stories. As thanks, the dwarf tells you of an old mine he knows. He marks the location on your map. Great. One option unavailable. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, marks a route for a mithril mine. Ooh. Now that is pretty interesting to me. That is very interesting to me, actually. Right, Garoon is no longer very unhealthy. So we're going to break camp here. We've only got 13 days worth of uh, provisions now. We could go head up to the mithril mine or a place to see. Uh, we'll head up here. We'll go to the Mithril Mine. Mithril. Right, one more turn to get over there. Alright, a nice helpful old dwarf. Okay. A ghost of a hanged man is seen in your village. Hunt, uh, haunting your people's dreams. He's seen coming always from the same direction and returning there after several hours of haunting. Your people wake uneasily every night and some become cursed. Your scouts soon mark a possible location of the ghost's Home. Deforming curse. A curse of deformity takes away some of your attractiveness. Oh no! It's the hard blank door become ugly. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. There's nothing I can do. Our expedition is very far away. However, checking out the Mithril Mine is going to be the last thing we do in this episode. So let's go and find out what that is to find out. Right, one option is unavailable because we don't have high enough magic or folklore. You come across the remains of a mithril mine. It is old and decrepit, but there is passage that still looks usable. You go inside and find the tunnel is dark, dusty and unpleasant, but still sturdy enough to go down the shaft. 
You go down the passage and find a way into the mines, but just as you reach the mithril ore, you're met by a group of angry dwarves who are evidently not going to talk about this. You have time to retreat, if you wish. Hmm. Yeah, tactical retreat. Dwarves are dangerous. Three skulls. It's actually nasty. It's hard. This middle of the road. I mean, maybe. Maybe we could do it. I'm going to leave that on a bit of a cliffhanger there. We're going to find out what we do in the next episode. I hope you've enjoyed this one, and I hope you'll be joining me for the next. But until then, and as always, do take care.